Hi there. So let's continue with uh, our lesson on the bank reconciliation statement. Now that we've understood the fundamental and everything that there is to be done, we're going to solve uh, a question and then see how the pieces come together, how we repair the adjusted cash book and then how we repair the statement of the bank reconciliation statement for a company. So question one in your ebook. At 31st December 2007, the balance on the cash account was 11,820 debits. The balance on the debit side, the balance on the cash account was 11,820 debits. But the appearing, but the balance appearing on the bank statement was 15,000 credits. So look at it. Our bank. Uh, our cash book is showing that we have 11,820 at the bank, but then our bank statement is showing that we have $15,000 at the bank. So let's continue with the question. It says, the reasons for the difference were as follows. The reason for the differences were as follows. The reasons for the difference were as follows. One, bank charges $20. A payment of $1,002 had been entered in the cash account as $2,100. A check for $200 had been dishonored. There were unpresented checks totaling $6,500. Lodgements of $4,000 had not been appeared, had not yet appeared on the bank statement. Required. Calculate the correct balance on the cash account and prepare a bank reconciliation statement. So that is what the examiner said we should do. As you see, there's a very small, tiny, little question that doesn't have a lot of things to be doing so of, for us to do. So the first thing we do is to prepare our adjusted cash book. So let me plot out my division here. Ah, I'm going to read you right so we get more portion. So let's do our adjusted cash book here. So revised or adjusted cash book. Our currency is the dollar. Now, so when we go back to the question, we are told that the balance was 11,820 debit. So balance brought down 11,820. Then we, we are told that the first thing there is bank charges. If you remember your pro forma, you will know that bank charges comes on the odds, the credit side. So bank charges, that's $20. The next thing is payment of 1002 had been entered in the cash book as 2100 So what is that? We made a payment of 1200 but it has been recorded as 2100 That means the amount has been what? overstated. Okay, So that is the over, overcast of error. So if there is overcast of error, we find the difference, and the difference is 900 Now, if it was a payment, and we are supposed to record 1000 to and record 200 meaning, meaning the figure is more here. So we bring this on the debit side, the 900 to reduce that. So correction of error, that will be 900. How we get a treatment? We made a payment. And well, if we make payments, we credit our cash book. All right? But then, whilst we are making the payment, uh, we are supposed to record the payment was 1002 but we recorded it for 2100 meaning the payment side of the cash book has been overcast. So we need to debit it to reduce uh, that overcast with a difference. Next, a check for $200 had been dishonored. So this other checks also comes on the credit side because when we received the check, we debited our cash book, but then we took the check to the bank and then the check was not uh, given or the check was not paid. So what do we do? We need to credit our cash book now. So this other checks, this other check, and that was given to us as $200. 
200 dollars then the next item there is there were unpresented checks totaling 6500 there were unpresented checks totaling 6500 now unpresented checks is not a revised cash book item is the uh, brs item so then the last item there was lodgement now lodgement is the same as deposits okay when you lodge you deposit the same thing so that is all about this cash book so we balance it out okay so which side is bigger certainly the debit side is bigger when we add it up it will be one two seven two zero one two seven two zero so balance carry down it's going to be here and the balance carry down is going to be twelve thousand five hundred so balance brought down twelve thousand five hundred so that is the revised cash book we prepared now since the revised cash book is having a debit balance then we will go with the first pro forma for the bank reconciliation statement so bank reconciliation statement so with the bank reconciliation statement two cash columns as always we bring this balance so balance as per revised cash book and that is 12,500 then we add unpresented checks There was nothing like errors and there, so that will not be an issue. So the unpresented checks, 6,500. So we add it up and that should give us 19,000. Then, lodgement of 4,000 had not yet appeared on the bank statement. Okay, so that is what? Uncredited checks. Because if we have lodged the check and it hasn't appeared on the face of the uh, of the bank statement that means it has not been credited by the bank so let's uncredited checks and that was given to us as four thousand so when we less it we get balance as per bank statement right which is going to be fifteen thousand 15,000. Now, if you check from the question, we were told that the balance appearing on the bank statement was 15,000. So, it's the same. Now, if the balance is given and you do the workings and you don't get it, that means you are wrong. So, in this case, it means that our revised cash book is correct and then our bank reconciliation statement too is correct because it is telling us that from the workings we have done, this is how much we are supposed to have in the bank and truly that is how much is outstanding on our bank statement so that is the first question on BRS so let's go to the second question which is in your book as Lewis or uh, Lasix Limited Lasix Limited that is going to be um, a bit detailed so Let's see how we go about it. So let me put the name of the company down. Lessons Limited. You can't see that, right? Don't worry. That's just the name of the business. So let's go through it and then see what we are supposed to do. So I'm going to read through the question, then I pick it one, I pick the items one after the other, then we discuss uh, how they are supposed or they are going to be treated. So the cash book of Lessons Limited as of 31st December 2016 discloses a balance of 18,420, which did not agree with the bank statement balance, with the bank statement balance. Investigation revealed the following. One, checks received of 2,000 Ghana cedis. 
5,000 Ghana cities and 12,450 Ghana cities were still in the business drawers. What is that? So, checks received of 52,000, 5,000, and 12,400 Ghana cities were still in the business drawers. Two, 1,200 and 1,800 standard orders for the payments of electricity charges and insurance respectively were paid by the bank, but this has not been recorded in the cash book of Lexus Limited. Third, the bank charges, the bank charged 150 Ghana cities for a checkbook issued to Lexus Limited. Next, the bank was has wrongly debited a check of 4,955 4, Ghana cities into Lexus account, which should have been placed in another customer's account. Next, a credit transfer of 5,000 Ghana cities had been made in favor of Lexus Limited. The transfer has not been recorded in the cash book. Next, a check of 70,000 Ghana cities drawn by Lexus Limited was currently entered in the cash book but debited to the bank statement as 7,000. Next, the following checks were, which were paid in November 2016 have not been presented. So we are giving three checks there. Required, prepare the adjusted cash book and then II, a statement, sorry, a, a bank reconciliation statement. So in this question, you see that there are a lot of things playing out here. So let's take it one after the other and then discuss. So I like to put my pro forma down when I'm solving questions, right? So the adjusted cash book. So this time around, we are working in Ghana cities. Then I put my bank reconciliation statement up here. Two cash columns. So let's see how it goes. The cash book of Lexus Limited as of 31st December 2016, right? discloses a balance of 18,450. Right, now, because this question is silent, we don't know if the cash book is debit or credit. But if it is silent like this, we assume that it's a good news, so debit. So balance brought down for the period is 18,450. Then we are told that the following things happen. One, check received of 52,000 5,000 and then 12,450 were still in the business drawer. Now, if these checks were still in the business drawer, what, what is the meaning of that then? It means we've not taken it to the bank for the bank to what? Uh, uh, deposit, right? We've not taken it to the bank yet for the bank to deposit. So what do we do in relation to this case? So we call it unpresented what? Checks, right? So we treat them as unpresented checks, all right? They are still in our coffers. We treat them as unpresented checks and we add them back to it. So we'll be dealing with it in the bank reconciliation statement. Next one, 1,200 and 1,800 standing order. So immediately we hear the word standing order, we know we are coming here. So this is for insurance and then electricity. What did I write? Standard. What, what is that? So let me run that out. Standing order. So we're going to add the two. So when we add the two, that is 1,002 and 1,008. That should give us 3,000. And that's going to be the standing order for that. Next. Uh, we are also told that the bank charge 150 Ghana cities for checkbook. So bank charges, credit balance or credit side. 150. Look, I put dollars here when we are working in Ghana cities.
Next item. The bank has wrongly debited a check of 4955 into Lexus account. So wrong debit by the bank will be treated in the bank reconciliation statement. The next item, a credit transfer of 5000 had been made in favor of Lexus Limited. Credit transfer. That means we are receiving money, so we debit, okay? Credit transfer of 5000. So we are receiving money so we debit our cash book. Next, a check of 70,000 drawn by Lexus Limited was currently entered in the cash book but debited to the bank statement at 7,000. So we wrote a check for payment of for payments which is 70,000. But when the bank was debiting our accounts, the bank should have debited our accounts with 70,000, but they, bet, they debited our accounts with only 7,000. Meaning, the bank had increased our bank accounts by 63,000. I hope you are getting it. You've issued a check, and it is for payment. So the bank is supposed to reduce your bank balance by 70,000, but they reduced your bank balance only by 7,000, meaning they have increased your bank balance in error by 63,000. So that 63,000, the difference, will be referred to as what? Error credited by bank, and we will deal with it under the bank reconciliation statement. Then the next thing is, the following checks were paid in November but had not been presented. Okay. The following checks were paid in November but had not been what? presented. So we're going to sum all those up. We're going to sum all those up and then we calculate our, or we get our answer. So the checks that were paid which are not presented are going to be the unpresented checks in that case. So that is all about our revised cash book. So we balance it out. So when we balance it out, I think the total should be 23,450. 23,450. So balance carry down, it's going to be here as 2,300. Am I right? Yeah. Balance brought down 2,300. So when we come to the bank reconciliation statement, what do we do? We need to bring the balance as per adjusted cash book. Which is this 20, 300. Then we're going to be adding unpresented checks. Right? So if you look at the unpresented checks from the question, we were told that the company issued some check, the last three checks below there. So we add all those three items. Maybe we can write the numbers down as 1142. These are the quotes on the check. 1168 and then 1190. So this is 2000. Or better still, we can just sum them up. All right, we can just sum them up. And that is 11,655. 655. Yeah, so that is going to be the unpresented check. Now, you also realize that the company, we, we told about, we mentioned the error credited by the bank, the 63,000. So that is going to come. So error credited by bank, 63,000. That will also come. So when we add these two, what are we going to get? We're going to get, let me punch that out. I think I don't have that here. Okay, so 11.6. Five five plus sixty three thousand. That's going to be seventy four six six five. So we add that to this twenty three 
2300 and that gives us no that should be so 11 so that would be 94965 then we less uncredited checks so what are the uncredited checks? The uncredited checks are the checks that we were told that we have received, but they were still in our drawer. So these are the uncredited checks, and these are three. So when we add the three up, that is going to give us 69,450. 69,450. Then we bring the error debited by bank. Remember we were told that the bank debited Lexus accounts in error. So the error debited by bank is going to come here 4955. So when we sum these two up and take it here, what are we going to get? So 69450 plus 4955 and that is going to be 74405. So we subtract that from the 90 and that gives us balance as per bank statement. Right? Balance as per bank statement. So that is going to be 23,560. 23,560. So this is what you need to understand about the bank reconciliation statement. So look at how we solve the first question and then look at how the second question is. Now there is another form of question where the statement will be given, which is actually a question you'll be trying. Okay, so you try your hands on the rest of the two questions there and then I'll check it during our one-on-one -on -one discussion. So you're going to try that question, but look at how the treatments were made. Those checks we paid that were still that had not been presented, and then those checks that we had received that were still in our drawer. So all of these checks are on onward. Uh, the ones we received that, are, that were still in our drawer is the uncredited check, and then the one we've paid, but people have not gone for the bank to redraw, are the unpresented uh, checks. So look at the difference between the first question and then this question. Then as I was mentioning, there is a third way the examiner can put the question and that is uh, give you the cash book of the company and then give you the whole bank statement. So you're going to be trying that question, but the way you go about that question is that you are going to look at the debit side of the bank statement. Everything on the debit side of the bank statement is supposed to be on the credit side of the cash book, okay? Because when we make payments, we credit our cash book, the bank debits our accounts. Then everything on the credit side of the bank statement is supposed to be on the debit side of the cash book. So you're going to figure out the items. So if, for instance, there is something, there is a payment we've made on the credit side of the cash book, which is supposed to be on the debit side in the bank statement, but it's not there, then that becomes unpresented checks. Let me take that again. If there is a payment on the credit side of the cash book, which is supposed to have been in the bank statement, on the debit side of the bank statement, and it's not there, then that becomes what? Unpresented checks. Meaning, we have uh, issued payments, but the check has not been taken to the bank for the withdrawal. Then, Everything on the debit side is supposed to be on the credit side of the bank statement. Okay, so if we have received checks, but the checks are not reflecting on the bank statement, then we call those, all those checks as uncredited checks. Then there are certain things that will be exclusive in the bank statement that will not be in the, uh, uh, in the cash book. These things are going to be things such as standing order, bank charges, direct credit. Alright? Then if there is any footnote about these other checks, whatever it is, 
you handle it as well in relation to that. So you're going to try the rest of the two questions and make sure you try them and then you send me the results, I will, the answer, I will go through it. Then when we are doing our one-on-one -on -one session, I will answer any questions that you may be having in relation to that. So this is what you need to understand about bank reconciliation statements. So I will see you in the next video as we talk about some other aspects of the syllabus.